high mountain apart by themselves. This is not easy. To be led by Jesus into a high mountain physically. I've had the pleasure or the, the, the pain of trying to climb Blue Mountain. And those of you who have ever tried to climb Blue Mountain, put your hands up. Not many. It takes a very brave soul to climb Blue Mountain. We started off very early in the morning. It was cold and a lot of fog. And we merrily went up. We thought it was fun. We had a little bottle of water. And we started climbing. But somewhere along this journey up Blue Mountain, this little boy from Mandeville Bush started to falter by the wayside. I started to fall behind the crowd. And I enviously looked at people that were going up the mountain. Very strong and fit. Because their body and their mind was conditioned for the journey. And so I had my stick and I climbed in the dark. I was there with a few folks struggling behind. And one of the, the worst things about climbing a mountain is that the gradient of the mountain is continually against you. There is hardly any place flat that you can stand up and your back rests. So after a while your back starts to hurt you. Because you are just going up and up and up. After a while, if you have asthmatic conditions, they will start to act up because the ear gets very thin on the mountain. Some people, professional climbers, will carry oxygen tanks to some of the highest mountains on the earth. And it's not just oxygen, it's not just the gradient, it's the gravity that's against you. You're going against gravity, you're trying to define gravity. And weariness and coldness sets in on this high mountain. But Jesus was leading the way up this mountain. And it's not just a physical mountain, but I believe it's a spiritual mountain. He was carrying them on a breaking journey. Oh, hallelujah. You cannot follow Jesus and not be broken down. You cannot follow Jesus and not have your pride and your ego lost by the way. You have got to leave it at the base of the mountain. Because before we started Blue Mountain, they said you cannot carry any load. And I thought a bottle of water is not a load. A bottle of water is a necessity. But somewhere up there, you find out that a bottle of water is a heavy load. And you want to drink the water very fast. So that it becomes very light to you. No wonder the scripture says if you are going to follow Jesus, what we have got to lay aside every weight and sin we have got to lay it aside before we start this journey and a lot of people are struggling in their Christianity because they have the weight and the sin going up the mountain expecting to be blessed by God and sin is in your life but Jesus did not lead them into a valley because in the valley there is limited vision on the high mountain, there is superiority of vision. 360 degrees you can see to the north, the south, the east, and the west. You can see all around you. You can see your enemies when they're coming. You can see them gathering forces and strategizing. God leads you to high mountains to see. Superior vision to see. And it takes a sacrifice to see. And he took them apart by themselves. This was not a popular thing to do. This was not something to carry the multitude or the crowd. Not everybody could last on this mountain. These men were sanctified men. And this spiritual mountain was a place of spiritual vision, wisdom, revelation, power, and authority. That's what God wants to pour out in this apostolic church today. Vision, wisdom, revelation, power, and authority. But this leading requires isolation. Isolation. And many of us are not ready to be isolated. We are so hooked up to people. We are feeding on the agenda and the opinions of people. And some of you are hooked up in relationship and you don't want to leave that man or that woman because you're seeing life through their eyes. When they're happy, you're happy. 
when they're sad, you're sad. They're like a drug in your mind. A drug in your spirit. And you know the relationship is wrong. But you can't leave maybe that friend or maybe it's an intimate partner. You can't leave them because you're hooked up to their vision. But you cannot be a follower of Jesus and be a follower of the ideas of men. You have got to leave men behind. Oh, hallelujah. Because the Lord is high and holy. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. The thoughts of God are always in opposition to the thoughts of men. God, when you walk with him, will blow your mind. Hallelujah. God even said to us, if you ask of me, and you believe in faith, I will do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever think or ask of me. Hallelujah. That means the Lord says, I'm going to answer your prayer. But I'm not just going to answer it. I'm going to do it exceedingly. I'm going to do beyond what you thought. In fact, when you walk into the Lord, he said his blessings are going to overtake you. Oh, hallelujah. And those of us who drive, you know that sometimes a man overtake you. They draw up beside you and then they cut in in front of you and they go ahead and you find yourself chasing them. That's the sort of blessing that the Lord is going to pour out on you. The blessing that will draw up beside you, go ahead of you. Hallelujah. And blessing just cover you. Hallelujah. To the left or the right. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not just follow me, but it's going to overtake me. Hallelujah. My God Almighty. So the Bible says that Jesus was transformed before them at this high mountain. Not in the valley, but in the high mountain. Jesus has a personal revelation for them. And he transformed himself and revealed his glory. Now the word transfigured comes from the word metamorpho. From what we have, metamorphosis. And we see it in nature that the Lord has the butterfly. The butterfly is a caterpillar before it can fly. It creeps and it's a very greedy animal, eating up. And then after a while, after eating up all the leaves, all the things that you have planted, he cocoons himself and stays there for weeks, hanging on a tree. Then all of a sudden, the cocoon begins to break slowly. And miraculously, wings begin to appear. And something that could not fly before, but could only creep and eat on the ground or on the tree, suddenly begins to fly and have superiority over the air and over the atmosphere. A caterpillar to a butterfly. And as in the natural, so in the spiritual. Many of us come into Christ and we are creeping. And we are eating, desiring the sincere milk of the word of God. Wanting to grow. Wanting to get strong. Wanting to be rooted and grounded in God. But sometimes we deceive ourselves. Because in the rooting and the grounding, we want to stay there. But God don't want you to stay there just rooted and grounded. But God wants you to occupy spiritual places. God wants you to ascend on high and do great works for him. God wants you to have dominion, not just of the cattle and the creeping things of the earth. But God wants you to have dominion over the fowls of the air. In Genesis, he says he wants us to have dominion over them. And in the Gospels, God reveals to us that demons are actually fowls of the air. So the apostolic church has been called to have dominion over demons. Dominion over fallen angels. Dominion over evil spirits. Dominion over principalities, works of darkness, rulers. Spiritual wickedness in high places. But you cannot have dominion if your vision has not been elevated. And your vision cannot be elevated if your flesh and yourself and your own agenda has not been broken. God wants to change the pattern of your life. Some of us are stuck in some patterns. Some routines of living that can't, can't cause the glory of God to be ushered in our lives. You're too stuck in a human pattern. You've been trying to pattern your life like other persons. But you have been called by God to live a unique holy life. Everything about you ought to be different. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said your very speech ought to be seasoned with grace. 
Your time doesn't belong to you when you're in the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Kingdom people have a different orientation. A different dominion over time. The world wastes time. And they party all night. But Christians stand up sometimes. We have to break the cycle and the pattern. And have to sit up at night and in the morning. When others are sleeping, we have got to be watching over the night praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God's calling for a generation to break the pattern of your life. It's time to lose some sleep. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is upon us. Demons are upon us. Possessing our young people. Even our apostolic young people. Demons are possessing our young people in the schools. They're watching vampire shows. They're listening to music. They're on the internet. He's coming in like a flood. But the spirit of the living God is lifting up a standard in this church today. On Friday night, I was called into a deliverance session. Young apostolic girl possessed by a demon. Oh, hallelujah. We walked up into that house, started to talk to her. She was denying it. And that's what the devil does. Oh, hallelujah. When you're possessed by a devil, you deny your condition. When you're possessed by a demon, you deny that you have a weakness. The Bible said if you have no, you will say you have no sin, you're a liar. You make God a liar. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We started to talk to her and after a while the demon identified himself by name. He started to speak and start tried to change form. He tried to change identity to all kinds of different persons. But we pressured him in the Holy Ghost. And after a while he started to cry out, we need backup, we need backup, we need backup. Oh, hallelujah. We pressured him in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 And some of you, the devil been sitting on you and sitting on your children because there is no pressure. You're not pressuring him. When you lift your hands and you worship God and you call on the fire of God, the devil is pressured. He can stand the glory of God in your life. When the glory of God rush into your life, he lifts your vision and calls you to see things and identify spirits, unclean spirits working in your life. Hallelujah. And it's for you to open your mouth with power and boldness and call the spirit by name and command it to come out. It's time for some apostolics to stand and plead the blood in the schools. Teachers, lose the spirit of fear. Some of you have been camouflaging the glory of God. Wrapping and cocooning yourself. Hiding from men because you don't want them to know that you're apostolic. But the enemy is upon us. And this is a time where you do or die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a time where you've got to call prior meeting. Even sometimes when, you when you're teaching your class, you've got to call prior meeting. And risk your job and your reputation for the glory of God. We cannot allow our young people to be possessed. And recently I was watching also another video from another school. And I mentioned this a couple of Thursday nights ago. Where the religious education class uh, was experimenting with the spirit of kumina. And playing the kumina drum. Entertaining that demon. Hallelujah. All of a sudden there was a possession. And they sent for uh, a revivalist church. And a poko band from a revivalist church to come. A kumina band to play kumina to get out demons. And there was a, 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 an extremity of possession. And more demons begin to fill them up. Oh hallelujah. But we don't need the strategy of the world in getting rid of demons. We don't throw holy water to get rid of demons. Ha ha. Hallelujah. We don't put cross on you to burn your flesh to get rid of demons. Hallelujah. Because on Friday night when we lay hands, demons said don't touch me. But we lay hands. And we are anointed with the olive oil. Hallelujah. All of a sudden he said it start to burn. Hallelujah. Oh my God. The anointed demons are afraid of the fire of God. That's why they don't want you to pray. That's why they block your prior life. That's why he's in your life like a roadblock. Blocking up your time. Blocking up your consecration. Because he knows if you get up on that high mountain. God's going to rip. The shrouds off him. God's going to show you your enemy. 
Get on that high mountain of prayer. Get on the high mountain of faith and worship. Get up there and stay up there.